Chapter 1. Ignition Sequence. The Vision of Noel Skus. The morning sun cast long shadows across the launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas. Noel Skus stood with his hands clasped behind his back, squinting against the glare reflecting off the sleek, silver-white exterior of the Hermes 7 rocket. At 58 years old, his once jet-black hair had given way to a salt-and-pepper mix that he rarely bothered to tame. The lines around his eyes had deepened over the years, etched by equal parts, laughter, stress, and exposure to the Texas sun during countless launch days like this one. T-minus 30 minutes, announced a voice through his earpiece. Noel gave a slight nod, though no one was there to see it. His team knew better than to disturb him during these quiet moments before a launch. These were the moments when his mind worked best, when he could parse through problems and scenarios with a clarity that eluded him in the noise of board meetings and press conferences. The Hermes 7 represented eight years of trial and error, of explosions and setbacks, of redesigns and refinements. Today would mark the 79th unmanned test flight between Boca Chica and Paris. 78 successful flights in succession had brought them to this point, to the brink of the next phase. Mr. Scoos, a voice called from behind him. Noel turned to see Ada Chen approaching. As Nestle's chief engineer, she had been instrumental in solving the re-entry issues that had plagued the early Hermes models. At 34, she was arguably the most brilliant aerospace engineer of her generation, having declined offers from every major tech company to join Nestle's mission to revolutionize global transportation. The final checks on the cooling system are complete, she reported, her tablet displaying a cascade of green indicators. All systems nominal. And the weather in Paris? Noel asked, his voice carrying the slight South African accent he had never fully shed despite decades in America. Clear skies over the Seine. Optimal conditions for landing. Ada replied. She hesitated for a moment before adding, The team is confident, Noel. 78 successful flights isn't a fluke. The system works. Noel's lips quirked in what might have been a smile. 78 flights without humans on board. 78 flights where failure meant lost cargo and damaged equipment. He turned his gaze back to the rocket. Next month, it will be people strapped into those seats. 30 lives, depending on everything we've built, working perfectly. Ada followed his gaze to the rocket. That's why today's test matters. One more verification before the manned flight. The simulated passenger weight distribution, the life support systems, everything will be monitored as if there were actual passengers on board. Noel nodded, his expression inscrutable. Have robotics confirmed the status of the test dummies? All 30 humaniform units are secured and instrumented. Ada confirmed. We'll have complete biometric data throughout the flight. Good. Noel checked his watch. I'll be in launch control for final countdown. Make sure Malik has the Paris team ready for recovery and data collection. As Ada departed with a nod, Noel took one last look at the Hermes 7. In less than an hour, this vessel would be traveling at 25 times the speed of sound, arcing through the upper atmosphere before descending toward the Seine River in Paris. The journey would take just under 10 minutes, a trip that currently required commercial airlines nearly nine hours to complete. Airlines. Noel almost smiled at the thought. Soon, that word would join telegraph and steamship in the lexicon of obsolete transportation methods. Nestle wasn't just building faster rockets. They were redefining the very concept of global travel. His phone vibrated with a message from Judith, his executive assistant, reminding him of the board meeting scheduled for that afternoon. The board members would be watching today's launch with particular interest. The success of the Hermes 7 program had direct implications for Nestle's stock price, which had experienced significant volatility in recent years as the company poured billions into research and development. Noel pocketed his phone without responding. The board could wait. Right now, his focus was entirely on the sleek vessel before him and the future it represented. As he turned to make his way to launch control, Noel's thoughts drifted momentarily to the conversation he'd had with his oldest son, Kai, the previous evening. At 27, Kai had recently completed his MBA and had been pushing for a more significant role within Nestle's corporate structure. You've got three companies to run, Kai had argued over dinner at Noel's Austin mansion. Nestle, Tunnel Transport, and Nurex. You're stretched too thin. Let me take some of the weight. Noel had responded with his typical deflection. When you can tell me how the Raptor 4D engine's thrust vectoring system differs from the 3C model, maybe we can talk about your role at Nestle. The hurt in Kai's eyes had been evident, but Noel had learned long ago that sentimentality had no place in business. Nestle wasn't a family heirloom to be passed down. It was the vehicle for a vision. And that vision 
require the best minds, regardless of DNA. The doors to launch control slid open as Noel approached. Inside, dozens of engineers and technicians manned their stations, their faces illuminated by the glow of monitors, displaying telemetry data, weather conditions, and system diagnostics. T-minus 15 minutes, announced Launch Director Marcus Reed, a former NASA flight controller who had joined Nestle five years earlier. All systems go. Weather conditions optimal at both launch and landing sites. Noel took his position at the central console, scanning the array of displays that provided a comprehensive overview of the mission. Begin final checklist, he ordered. As the team worked through the pre-launch procedures, Noel's mind was already racing ahead to the next phase, the first manned intercontinental rocket flight. Today's test would provide the final data set needed to secure regulatory approval from both U.S. and European authorities. The regulatory battles had been almost as challenging as the engineering problems. Traditional airlines had lobbied aggressively against Nestle's plans, citing safety concerns while thinly veiling their economic anxieties. But after years of negotiations, demonstrations, and the occasional public controversy, Nisla had secured conditional approval for passenger service, pending the successful completion of 100 consecutive unmanned test flights. Today's flight would be number 79. T minus five minutes, Marcus announced. Fuel pressurization complete. Navigation systems aligned. Automated flight controls active. Noel tapped a command into his console, bringing up the live feed from inside the Hermes 7's cabin. 30 humaniform test units sat securely strapped into ergonomically designed seats. Each unit contained sensors that would record the G-forces, temperature variations, and other conditions that human passengers would experience during the flight. T minus one minute, came the call. Switching to internal power. The atmosphere in launch control grew tense with anticipation. Despite the routine nature of these tests after 78 successful flights, each launch carried the weight of Nestle's ambitions. Ignition sequence start. On the main screen, flames erupted from beneath the Hermes 7 as its engines roared to life. The rocket remained secured to the launch pad as the engines stabilized, their thrust building to optimal levels. T minus 10 seconds, nine, eight, Noel's eyes remained fixed on the vibration data scrolling across his display. The early Hermes models had suffered from resonance issues during ignition, leading to structural failures. The solution had come from an unlikely source, a material science breakthrough at Nestle's battery division, originally developed for energy storage applications. Three, two, one, lift off. The Hermes 7 rose from the pad with surprising grace for a vehicle of its size, accelerating rapidly as it climbed into the clear Texas sky. Within seconds, it had disappeared from view, leaving only a trail of exhaust vapor. Mach 1 achieved, reported the flight dynamics officer. Trajectory nominal. Noel watched as the velocity indicators climb. Mach 5, Mach 10, Mach 10. The Hermes 7 was now traveling at approximately 11,500 miles per hour, approaching its peak velocity of Mach 25 as it reached the edge of Earth's atmosphere. Stage separation successful announced the systems engineer. Second stage ignition confirmed. On a separate display, Noel could see the real-time location of the Hermes 7 as it arced over the Atlantic. At this speed, the journey from Texas to Paris would take just under 10 minutes, a fact that still amazed him despite having witnessed it 78 times before. Preparing for re-entry came the call from mission control. Heat shield deployed, attitude adjustment in progress. This was the most critical phase of the flight. The Hermes 7's re-entry system had been completely redesigned after the catastrophic failure of the Hermes 3 during a test flight two years earlier. That incident had nearly derailed the entire program, sending Nestle's stock plummeting and emboldening critics who claimed that Knoll's vision was fundamentally flawed. Re-entry trajectory locked, reported the guidance officer, deceleration within expected parameters. Noel's attention shifted to the biometric data from the test units. If the forces experienced during re-entry exceeded human tolerance thresholds, they would need to further refine the descent profile, another delay they could ill afford with investors growing increasingly impatient. Paris Control has visual confirmation, announced the communications officer, Hermes 7, on final approach to send landing platform. A new feed appeared on the main screen, transmitted from cameras at Nesla's Paris facility. The Hermes 7 was now visible, descending toward a floating platform anchored in the Seine River, its landing thrusters firing to control the final descent. 
Touchdown confirmed. Came the report from Paris Control. All systems nominal. Recovery team approaching. A spontaneous round of applause broke out in launch control. 79 successful flights. 21 more to go before they could begin passenger service. Noel allowed himself a brief smile before rising from his console. Full diagnostics on all systems, he instructed. I want a complete report on my desk by tomorrow morning. As the team dispersed to their various post-flight tasks, Marcus approached Noel with a tablet displaying preliminary telemetry data. Clean flight, he reported. Re-entry temperatures 5% below our models predicted, which gives us an additional safety margin. Noel nodded, scanning the figures. What exactly are they looking for? Noel asked, taking a seat behind his desk. Based on the preliminary information, they're concerned about potential shortcuts in the inspection process. Derek explained. The anonymous source allegedly provided internal emails suggesting that certain secondary checks were being abbreviated to meet the accelerated timeline. Olivia opened her tablet, displaying a document matrix. We've already begun compiling all communication related to the inspection protocol since the schedule acceleration. If there were any deviations from established procedures, we need to identify them immediately and understand the context. Noel's expression remained neutral, though his mind raced through possibilities. Who had the authority to modify inspection protocols? Technically, only you or the Safety Oversight Committee chaired by Derek, Olivia replied. But in practice, team leads in both Boca Chica and Paris have some discretion in implementing the established protocols based on specific conditions. I want every email, every message, every recorded conversation related to inspection procedures since we accelerated the schedule, Noel instructed. And I want a full technical review of all data from those flights, not just the summaries, but the raw telemetry. If someone's claiming we've compromised safety, I want to know exactly what they're referring to. As Derek and Olivia departed, to begin the intensive review process, Noel remained at his desk contemplating the implications. The timing of this development, just 15 flights short of certification, seemed suspiciously convenient for Nestle's competitors in the traditional aerospace and airline industries. Noel left the control center and walked down the hall to his private office. Once inside, immediately after closing his door, his phone buzzed with a message from Malik in Paris. Just received notice of inspection audit from European Aviation Safety Agency. Connected to FAA inquiry? Almost certainly, Noel replied. Prepare all documentation. Full transparency. We have nothing to hide. The door to his office opened, and Jordan Hayes entered without knocking, his usually composed demeanor visibly strained. Care to explain why I'm hearing about an FAA investigation from my contacts in Washington rather than from you? Noel met his gaze steadily. Because I just found out myself 10 minutes ago. Someone has provided the FAA with internal information suggesting safety compromises in our accelerated test schedule. Is there any truth to it? Jordan asked bluntly. Absolutely not. Noel replied without hesitation. We've maintained every safety protocol and standard throughout the acceleration. The only difference is frequency, not thoroughness. Jordan paced the office, the gravity of the situation evident in his agitated movement. This could delay certification by months. The market implications alone. I'm aware of the implications, Noel interrupted. But our priority now is identifying the source of these claims and providing complete data to demonstrate their inaccuracy. The regulatory relationships we've built over the past decade will be crucial in navigating this efficiently. Jordan stopped pacing, fixing Noel with an intense stare. Someone within Nestle is actively working against us, whether for personal gain, competitive reasons, or some misguided sense of caution. They've chosen to go outside the company rather than raising concerns internally. Noel nodded once, acknowledging the assessment. I've already initiated a review to identify who had access to the specific information provided to the FAA. In the meantime, we continue with the test schedule as planned. Any deviation now would only reinforce the perception that there's something to hide. After Jordan's departure, Noel stood by the wall of TVs showing the Paris landing platform, thinking about continuing preparations for the next test flight scheduled for the following morning. The methodical movement of personnel and equipment reflected the precision and care that had defined Nestle's approach from the beginning, a stark contrast to the accusations now threatening to derail their progress. His phone buzzed again, this time with a call from Ada Chen. Nole, I've reviewed the propellant valve data from flight 79 through 82, she reported. The fluctuation was within normal parameters, but I found something interesting in the analysis methodology. Go on, Noel prompted, his attention fully engaged. The initial analysis flagged the fluctuation as a potential anomaly based on comparison to historical data. But the comparative baseline used was from the original test schedule, not accounting for the thermal conditions specific to the accelerated launch cadence. Noel processed this information quickly. So the fluctuation wasn't abnormal at all. 
It was simply being measured against an inappropriate baseline. Exactly. Ada confirmed. When compared to the proper thermal profile for the accelerated schedule, the valve performance is exactly as expected. Whoever reported this as a safety concern either didn't understand the analysis methodology or deliberately misinterpreted it. Document that thoroughly, Noel instructed, and check the heat shield anomaly data using the same approach. If both reported issues are based on misapplied analysis methods, that significantly strengthens our position with the FAA. As he ended the call, Noel's mind had already shifted from defensive response to strategic countermeasure. Nestle had encountered opposition at every stage of its development, from established aerospace companies, traditional airlines, skeptical regulators, and conservative investors. Each challenge had been overcome through a combination of technological superiority, methodical data collection, and unwavering commitment to the vision of transforming global transportation. This latest obstacle would be no different. If someone within Nestle was actively working to undermine the certification process, they would be identified and removed. If external competitors were attempting to delay Nestle's entry into passenger service, their efforts would ultimately fail against the weight of empirical evidence. The Hermes program stood 15 flights away from certification, 15 more perfect landings, 15 more comprehensive data sets demonstrating the safety and reliability of rocket transportation. The path forward remained clear, despite the unexpected turbulence. Noel returned to his desk and began reviewing the technical documentation himself, preparing for the battle that lay ahead.